Well, I grew up uh, in what turned out to be a Christian home. Um, when we, when I was five years old, uh, we we got a knock on the door of someone selling encyclopedias, and then they they said that we see that you know you got the three boys. Uh, can we bring them to Sunday school? And and they, my parents said, yeah. And so we went for one week and then two weeks. And through that whole time, uh, in about six months, our whole family became Christians. Because my parents, they after two weeks, they said, enough of this. We're going too. And so within about six months, we became Christians. And I grew up in a Christian home. And I went to King's Garden uh, Christian school. And so I had a great background. But after I graduating from high school, I, I, you know, went to church. I kind of did things in the world. I was kind of half hearted. And I, and I ended up involved in three different churches. Uh, uh, I'd go to my parents' church and then I was going to Calvary Fellowship and I was going to a singles group, and I would go when I wanted to. It's like, okay, today I'm going to go to this one, and then, okay, I'm going to go to this one, and then I'd, then I'd go to this other group. And it was like I wasn't stable because I was going to different places all the time, and then I wouldn't go for weeks, too. I wouldn't go to any of them because I'm discouraged with it. But... What happened to me when I really started to grow was when I realized I needed to make a decision and I chose to go to Calvary Fellowship and I became involved there. And instead of just going to church, I got involved. They had a, a ministry where we brought handicapped people to church and I got involved in that and we would bring them to church. And by being involved, um, I had to go. I was committed. And I really started to grow. And the, and the sermons, they were for me. And I would go on Wednesday nights, and I just couldn't get enough. And I would grow. And it was different, because instead of going when I wanted to, I was committed. And that's what I found that I really started to grow. In fact, it was back in the 80s, um, I was involved in this, like I said, bringing the handicapped the church while well, they had started a prison ministry at Calvary Fellowship. And so I became involved in that. And uh, I, I had interest. And But the guy who started the ministry, as I walked in and got involved, in it, he, he was co-leading it with somebody else. Well, it became uh, impossible for him to continue on. And and the Lord put me in that position where I co-led the prison ministry for a couple of years and then led it about three more years where we would go out and, and evangelize to the prisoners and do services. And it was really um, a great, a great uh, time. And, it, you know, obviously I, it caused me to grow because I, I, I would preach like once a month and you know, I'm very shy. I'm not, I'm not good at speaking out. And I'm not, a, I'm not, I'm an introvert. You know, I'm not somebody who does that. But that's what God had me do. And it, it and then also is involved in evangelism. And so we would go and we would share with people on the streets. And we would, we would, um, you know, just approach people. And we really saw that we were used by God as, as, as we prayed. And we, we saw that people would have, have people in their lives that were praying for them. And we could feel that God was bringing us into people's lives. Um, and so that was a, a really big, big thing in my life. You, you meet a stranger and you're talking to them and they don't know you 
and you don't know them, and a lot of times people are willing to share with you, and they'll share about, oh yeah, my brother, he's uh, going to this church, yeah, and, and, and he's been you know, really trying to encourage me, and, and you can sense that he's been praying for, for this person, or whoever it is, their mother, their aunt, somebody is praying for them, and, and you know, God would have a step in. When I was growing up, I consider it growing up, when I really grew up in my Christian life, I felt like was in the, in the mid-80s when I quit floundering, like I was talking about, and I committed to one place and, and got involved. And when I was growing up, like I said, I am a very shy person and I'm very fearful. And I was at this overseers meeting because I was involved with the, leading the prison ministry and we were talking about, you know, perfect love that they, they, had, uh, that they had on the back of the bulletin. And I said, well, if we're going to go after this perfect love, fear is going to be our, our enemy. And I had really felt at that point that, you know, I conquered this immobilizing fear, and, you know, through the Lord's help and that. And then, you know, it wasn't but a few days later, we went out on the ferries. And this fear that I'd been struggling with in the past came back at me so hard. And it's like, I couldn't do anything about it. And, you know, and I tried to share with people and nothing. And finally, I just sat down on one of the chairs and gave up. But um, one of the guys goes, hey, this guy here has a question for you. And this guy comes up to me and he, he asked me a, a question. And in this overseers meeting, I had shared about 1 John 4.18, which says perfect love casts out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. And so this guy, he goes, I got this scripture that this friend wants me to read. Can you look this up for me? And he pulls out of his wallet this sheet of paper, 1 John 4.18. Yeah, and you what know, a setup, right? yeah, what a set. Yeah, I, I think God did. You know, <laughs> there's no doubt about it. Wow. And you know, one thing that you see when you're evangelizing or involved, you, what you see is in the Old Testament it talks about, or in the New Testament, whatever it talks about. While they were praying, God did something. And when you're involved on the front lines. You see that over and over again. While you're praying, God steps in, like this story. But I know I'm not a perfect speaker. I'm going to stumble over my words. I'm not going to say the thing just right. It's not going to work that way. That's not me. But you know what? God, you know, he, he never promised, like with Moses. It wasn't that he... he is he wouldn't stumble in a speech. His words would have power. And if you stumble and make a mistake in how you say something, but if God's behind it, it doesn't matter. You know, I, I mentioned how I came from a, what turned out to be a Christian family. And that's the biggest evidence that I have in my life. I think of my dad who lived to be, you know, live for the Lord. But he had a stroke, you know, in 2004, I think it was, and he ended up dying in 2006. And his life was miserable for that last couple of years. He lost his body, but not his brain. But yet, he went out a champion because he was everything he could do to help people, he, he would tell us how much he loved them. His attitude was that of Christ. And, you know, he was at uh, Richmond Reach Rehab. Well, my mom is there now. And talk about a witness. The staff, they come there to be encouraged by my mom. You know, and she's always saying how good things are and this. And her life is good grief. She was locked in prison for this whole time during COVID. And it's just amazing the attitude of God in her. 
And it just, I mean, to me, that's the evidence. Yes. Yes. That is a now thing, that's yes. A right now thing. That is definitely a right now thing. You think of a past thing. Um, first time I went skiing, you know, I, we went, uh, a friend of mine, we went to Canada, and then we decided to go to Mount Baker to go skiing. And so we, we, we were out late in Canada, then we drove to Mount Baker. It was a really bad plan. But we, we drove there, and then we skied all day, and I couldn't ski at all. And I, I, thought, I knew I'd fall down, but I didn't know how hard it would be to get back up. And so I struggled and struggled and struggled with that. And, but then the end of the day comes and we're gonna drive back. And so we're driving back to Seattle from Mount Baker. And it's 80 miles from Mount Baker to Bellingham. And then, you know, another about 80 miles back to Seattle. And so I decided, okay, I'll drive the first 80 and then Dave can drive the rest of the way. Well, I fell asleep at the wheel. I made it about 35, 40 miles. And I was doing about 50, 55 miles an hour. Went across the oncoming traffic, which there wasn't any. Went down this embankment, brushed a telephone pole, and then ran in smack into the next one. And the only injury that happened was Dave got a cut on his hand from the, from the glass that broke from my window. And we were, we were fine. And, you know, my mom told me afterwards that she felt really anxious about us going and she prayed for our safety. And she just prayed over us. And I, you drive out to Mount Baker, try and find a place that you can go off the road and live to tell about it. There, is, there isn't any. And I'm here because of answered prayer. And, you know, that is very real. And I remember joking with my mom. I go, well, why didn't you pray for the car, too, you know? <laughs> yeah, uh, there is a reason. God wants to use me for his glory. It says, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not a result of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God has prepared in advance for us to do. God has good works for me to do. And it's, it's you know, what I've found is if you avail yourself to God and say, Lord, here I am, he'll use you. When you're not going to be a per perfect person, I'm not, <laughs> people who know me know I'm not perfect. And... But God will use you. If you seek God and you seek him with your whole heart, you'll find him. And taste and see that the Lord is good. If you taste and put your trust in God and ask him to show you, he will. He really will. And God is good. But, you know, there needs to be a willingness to surrender to him and to you know, allow him to be on the throne of your life. You know, I was a Christian when I was going to the three churches, but I wasn't a Christian that was going to grow. It was, it's different. You know, when you give, and it's not like an organization. I'm not saying, okay, you got to go to this church and this is going to do it. But it's like when you commit to a body and, and you become a part, it's not about me. It's about God. It's not about what I do. It's about the body of Christ and what we do together. There's a reason Jesus said, where two or more are gathered, there am I in the midst of them. Because he wants us together. It's not a one-man show. Well, what's faith mean? It means you're putting your belief and your trust in something. I'm putting my belief and trust in this stool here, and I haven't gone to the ground yet. And as you put your faith and trust in God, I mean, I've seen him work so many times, over and over again, impossible situations that work out. And the thing that 
I hope is true of my life and, and our lives as Christians is sometimes we praise the Lord because God brought us through something and praise God. We can praise God before he brings us through it and by faith see it through. And we're not going to get what we want. My dad had a stroke. He didn't want that. My mom broke her hip. She's in Richmond Beach Rehab. not going to get out of there. I mean, but God is using her. God has her there for a reason. And the love of God that you see through both of my parents, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. I, if you had a choice of choosing your parents, I would have chose mine. And I, I'm just really blessed. Last year, I took a a dog's vacation, I call it, where I went to Brookings, Oregon. I just the dogs and me, but also the Lord. And I spent, you know, time in worship. That I, one of the things I love is all the Christian music and good teachings you can have and all that kind of stuff. But I went down there to Brookings. It, I couldn't get there when I wanted to. It was October, I think, 28th. It was winter time. But God blessed me so much. The, the, the weather was like 75 degrees on the ocean, and it was great. And we had, I had talked to some people. It was the lowest tide they'd had in years. And, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine and it, on the phone, or I texted him, and I said, well, you know... God does this for me a lot. He blesses me. And, and my friend goes, well, that's pretty arrogant. But I texted back to him. I go, no. Romans 4 or 5 says, To him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness. And I'm not godly. I want to be. But I have my trust in God and totally, as you put your trust in him, that's the biggest change in my life, is I can't earn it. It's from God. He did everything. And our faith and trust is in him. Mm -hmm.